What's up everybody, Matthew here. Thanks for checking into the YouTube channel. Today we're talking about reading. I just finished up a video in which I discussed the virtues and vices of reading inside and outside of one's own tradition. I wanna continue that line of thought this morning with another video in which I'm going to discuss um, what's better, reading people who are alive today or reading people who are dead. <laughs> That's an interesting topic too. So background here is I'm putting together this list of 100 books that I really want to uh, know very well, to read thoroughly, to completely understand. Uh, not so much to have committed to memory necessarily, but a hundred books that are really, really, really influential in shaping my mind as a Christian, my worldview as a thinker. So I'm putting together this list and it's almost done. I've got 98 books on the list and I'm actually ranking them in two ways. I've got one list that's alphabetical and another list, same, same books, ranked from 100 to all the way up to number one, my most influential and important books in my life. And so this topic of reading dead people versus living people has come up a little bit too. And I'm a little bit worried that my list of views uh, skewed too much towards the dead. <laughs> and I'm wondering if I have the balance right. I'm not sure. So looking at that list, I'm asking myself, well, do I have enough contemporary authors that are going to be in my top 100 list? And probably the answer to that is no, but I think I'm still doing this the right way for the following reasons. First of all, when you read those who are dead, it has already served, um, it's gone through the process of historical filtration. Now, what do I mean by historical filtration? Well, that's the idea that throughout history, only the best books tend to really make it through from one generation to the next, okay? So by the time a book becomes quite old, I'm not talking about its physical copy, you can find all kinds of old books and remnants in old libraries, but by the time a book has made it through several generations and is still being read, typically what that means is that book is very excellent and or has had significant impact in the world. Uh, so that it has survived and perpetuated as something meaningful for people to read. So just by way of example, you know, St. Augustine's Confessions is a very ancient uh, biography. It's one of the early forms of Christian biography where a person really examines what the Lord has done in their soul. Now, how many Christian biographies have there been written since then? Well, hundreds and even thousands, probably tens of thousands of Christian biographies. And yet the Confessions still seems to persist as one of the most, if not the most important Christian biography of all time. So it has endured the process of historical filtration. Now, what happened to all those other biographies? Well, some of them are impossible to find because they don't exist anymore. Uh, others of them exist maybe on some microfiche in a library somewhere or perhaps in a very old copy, but they're not read or discussed anymore. Well, what happened? Well, history filtered them out. And history ends up being a very excellent filter when it comes to discerning what is really, really good versus not so good or not so terribly influential. So reading dead authors, it does give you the advantage of having read the best stuff that has survived through history. Now, a second reason that I think reading dead authors is probably pretty important is because dead authors are something like a time machine. Now, time machines don't exist, at least not in 2023 that I'm aware of, but when you read a book, it does have the ability almost uniquely uh, perhaps maybe watching old films, but film itself isn't very old compared to books. Books have the ability to take you back and transport you to another world, another epoch, another historical era in which you can see things through the author's eyes. So this is one of the reasons why I love Jonathan Edwards, because I love and hope for revival. I've been praying for it all the time in church. Uh, and Jonathan Edwards he takes me back to the 1740s in which God poured out a great revival upon the land. And that's something that I would deeply cherish and deeply treasure. So I love to read these particular authors because they transport me back into a time <clears throat> that existed before my time. And not only that, but especially when we read some of the great writers, one of the things that we acknowledge about them is that they've endured a great amount of suffering in their lives. And this is why Somebody like John Bunyan is very, very precious to me, and even more so recently, because of how much he had to suffer for the sake of Christ. So not only did he suffer in his soul, which he tells us all about in Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners, 
But he also writes Pilgrim's Progress, for instance, out of his prison experiences. And so reading the dead, reading those who've gone before us, they give us this amazing perspective to see how God has shaped and sanctified some of the saints that have gone through just tremendously difficult uh, things in their lives. And then not only that, but reading the dead shows us beautifully what God has done in times past. Okay, so when we look at it, our own present, for instance, the news cycle right now is really, really terrible, very terrible, especially as I'm recording this video. The war between Israel and Hamas is, is very hot right now, just four days into this new war, Ukraine and Russia war going on. And sometimes we have, you know, the temptation towards pessimism. And <clears throat> one of the things that we forget is that God, excuse me, has done great and marvelous things throughout many of the generations in the past. And it reminds us of the faithfulness of God, even as he continues to preserve his church over time. So for those reasons, uh, historical filtration and the time capsule kind of phenomenon, and also just seeing God move in the lives of those who've gone before us, I find that reading dead people is very, very beneficial to my soul, probably skew that way. Now, that's not to say, excuse me, <coughs> <clears throat> Man, I'm struggling. That's not to say that reading living people doesn't have some benefit to it. It does. The problem, though, from my perspective, is especially back to that historical filtration concept, I don't know what is really going to persist as being very good. Okay? And since time is lim limited, I really want to delve in as much as I can to those things that are very, very good and helpful to my soul. Is something going to be helpful to my soul that's a new book that just came out? let's say 2022? Well, I don't know. History doesn't really know. Uh, the, the best book lists that come out are often, you know, kind of tweaked by publishers and, you know, the economic forces that drive who gets what review and things like that. We, it's hard to say what book is really going to have lasting benefit. But I will say this to the credit of modern writers is that modern writers are able to tackle um, problems and events that are unique to this particular day and time. Okay, so what I mean by that is this, like the advent of AI, for instance, th this is historically novel. Nobody knows what direction this is going to go. Edwards says nothing about that. Neither does Aquinas or Augustine or Luther. Nobody's gonna help me think through these issues. So I'm going to need some contemporary writers to help me to deal with some of the things that we're struggling with. Another example would be, for instance, like Carl Truman's really helpful books on how it is that we got to this strange land that we're in. What does he call it? Strange New World, I think is the name of the book. There's a, a larger version of that as well. But we're living in a very crazy time in which ideas are shifting massively, even right beneath our feet. The tectonic plates of history are moving right beneath us right now. That's why you feel like it's like a seismic shift happening. Well, because it is. And we do need some contemporary voices to help us diagnose exactly what's happening. And so there are plenty of good voices out there that are doing that very thing. So how much should we should we read the dead versus the living? Well, I guess that's up to personal preference. Um, it should probably some be some kind of a mix, maybe 75-25 or maybe 60-40, something like that. I doubt it would be 50-50, though. I do think we should probably skew towards the dead rather than the living, but that's just my opinion. Matter of fact, I'd love to hear your opinion on this topic. What do you read? Do you, do you like living authors better than dead authors? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for checking in. Love you lots. Talk to you later.